Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're on stage three of the formation of stars. What happened now is that the fragment of the big cloud of dust and gas that now will become the star that we're following has now reached a density that is greater than the critical density. Pressure can no longer stop the collapse. The collapse is going to happen. Because of external influences, the density was large enough for gravity to push it together to the point where pressure could no longer stop the collapse. And so the collapse is indeed in progress. And so at that point, a protostar will begin to form. Now, what does that protostar look like? Well, it's still basically a big cloud of dust and gas, but it's beginning to take shape. And also what's happening is when the cloud was many light years across and very large and beginning to collapse because of the external influences, there must have been some motion. There's never a case where dust and gas just sits there in space, is not moving at all, not rotating. There's usually some sort of motion, some sort of rotation. And as a cloud of dust and gas rotates because of the conservation of angular momentum, that rotational speed will begin to increase. And so slowly this cloud will begin to rotate. And as the cloud continues to collapse on the gravity, the rotation will begin to speed up more and more and more. And as it begins to speed up, it begins to change its shape. It begins to flatten along the center of the object and on the top and bottom it becomes a little bit more spherical so the shape turns into something a little bit more like that and it begins to pancake out. It begins to get flattened because of the centripetal forces that causes and of course Newton's first law which causes all the stuff that's on the edges of this cloud of dust and gas that's rotating. It wants to keep going straight but because it's rotating so fast it slowly begins to fling out and begin to become kind of like a like a saucer, flat towards the edges and spherical towards the center. So the protostar is beginning to take shape. The center portion of it will eventually collapse into the star and the other regions will eventually become the disk of the solar system. Well, then will produce the, the planets and the moons and the comets and the, and the asteroids and so forth. Temperature at the center begins to increase. Temperature may reach at this point about 10,000 Kelvin. Not nearly enough to make it into a true star to start nuclear fusion, but again, the temperature is beginning to build up, and because of that, pressure is beginning to push back, and there's going to be a lot more motion and commotion within that, and so heat is beginning to transfer from the interior where the pressure builds up to such an extent that temperature goes up to very high levels, and then what we start getting here is convection currents where slowly the heat gets pushed towards the edges and then the cooler edges fall back in. And just like what we see in the outer regions of the sun today, we start getting these convection currents that brings the heat from the center towards the edges. And the edges of that cloud of dust and gas begins to heat up as well. Slowly begins to heat up and slowly begins to glow. First a very faint red and as temperature continues to climb, the, temp the, the glow will become more and more intense and this enormous object, which is probably about the size of the solar system, about 10,000 times the diameter of the sun today, will begin to give off light to the point where normally you would be able to see it. Now quite often, this, the location where this happens is shrouded in lots of other dust and gas and so visible light normally can reach us from other places where this is currently happening. So it's very difficult to find these prototype stars, but sometimes we can actually find the glow of these stars by looking at the infrared radiation, which some of it actually may get through the dust and gas that's obscuring the visible light. Notice that the convection currents are continuing to bring more and more heat to the surface. The surface continues to heat up. And what is the source of that heat, you may say? Why is it that it's beginning to be so hot? Well, there's a couple things. One of them is, of course, increased pressure usually is involved in increased temperature. But that increased pressure comes from the energy as gas continues to collapse downward. It's kind of potential gravitational energy. It's like when you drop an object from a high place and it hits the ground, it, it converts potential energy into kinetic energy and into heat. And so that's basically what's happening here as well is as these molecules, these dust particles are getting closer and closer together and they're losing their potential energy, they're given up uh, from potential energy that then heat is created. So it's basically created from the collapse of the dust and gas where potential gravitational energy gets converted into heat and then that heat will then generate more and more commotion at the center and then you get these convection currents bring that heat to the surface and making the surface glow. So the surface begins to glow and at that point we have what we call a real protostar and if we draw an HR diagram where this is here the, the main sequence, what we find is that the protostar, if we were to put on, a, on an HR diagram, would appear somewhere on the right side of the diagram. 
right? Because that's where all the red objects are, because they're still very cool on the surface. But they're very luminous. Now, not because they're very hot. They're not as hot as stars yet, but they're so luminous because they're so enormous in size. Imagine there's enormous, a large object beginning to glow, beginning to give off quite a bit of light. So if, our, if the sun appears on the main sequence over here, you can see that a star that starts as a protostar would be brighter than the sun simply because of its enormous size, even though the temperature may be much, much cooler on the surface than currently our sun is. So depending upon the mass of that protostar, it would be either here, here, or here. You can see, depending upon the size, it would somewhere appear on the HR diagram. Now, low mass stars would eventually end up the main sequence here. Higher mass stars would end up here, and very large mass stars would end up over there on the main sequence. But you see, that's where they would appear first on the HR diagram. Let me, let me write that down. So, so this would be an HR diagram. And so the protostars would appear somewhere on the right side of that diagram, depending again upon how much mass they encompass when they're beginning to form. But at this, star, at this point, we have what we call a protostar, which is separated from a real star in that there's not yet any nuclear fusion taking place. The temperature required at the center of this for nuclear fusion to take place is much greater than, than the 10,000 degrees, so nuclear fusion is not yet part of this star's life. All right, and that's where we have our protostar, and as you see on the next video, the evolution just continues and marches its way towards what our star looks like today.